I had several people on the comments and stuff asking about the carving vise that I'm using. So I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about this is I have been teaching off from these for maybe 30 years now. And what this is, it's a farm disc that all I've simply done is put an inch and a quarter collar down here. Now these pipe fittings that I'm using, you guys, are black pipe fittings. They're not galvanized because you don't want to be welded on galvanized stuff. But I make these little tabs and I would weld this pipe fitting to this. Now there's a secret if you go to do that. If you go to welding on a farm disc like this, that thing will get hot and tweak and it will never set flat. So what I used to do is I'd weld just a little bit and put a wet rag there and let it cool off and then I'd weld a little more in a wet rag and cool it off. Uh, if you ever try to just do the whole thing at once, that thing will get hot and warp that disc and it'll never set flat. I, I've done it so many times. Now, I threaded these pipes. Um, I used to have a place when I lived in Oklahoma that would thread pipes, like a local hardware store or something that way. So this was an inch and a quarter pipe. And this top piece is one inch pipe. Well, this one inch will slide right inside that other one. Uh, all right, on this bottom piece, see that? This hole comes apart, so you could unscrew it out of the bottom of the disc down there. Um, here, I would drill a couple holes on different sides of this pipe. And after a while, I tried to keep these uh, down a little ways because this would come around and hit it uh, if it was just wrong, you know. All right, so this one-inch pipe, it threaded into up here. And now here, I welded just a little dab to where it wouldn't turn on there. You don't want the darn thing turning there. All right. Here, I simply, let me unscrew this, there. This is an inch and a half cold rolled steel. And I would drill it and tap it to where this bolt would thread into it, right? Like that. All right, then this hole is a three-quarter hole, and I would drill it through there. At one point, I had a machine shop and a friend that worked at this machine shop. So I would have him build me up 50 of these things at a time. And that way, when I got ready to build up a bunch of vices, I would have these parts. Um... Here is just a regular T that this piece would fit in. Now, sometimes I might have to reach in here with a die grinder and knock them threads back just enough to get this where it would slide in there good. You want it fairly tight, though. You don't want a lot of loose, you know, stuff going on there. All right, on the other end, it's just simply an inch and a quarter plug with a hole drilled in it. And I was using a half inch bolt that goes through that hole, see? Now let me say this while I'm talking about this bolt, is you have to use a hardened bolt, uh, a steel bolt. You... If you use a regular bolt, you'll pull the threads right off from it, which is, you know, early on in the game, I, I realized that that ain't going to work. Now, you might notice that I welded a little stop on the side there. 
and I'll, I'll take you through this. Let me put this back together. This screws in. Notice I put a niche in that T, see, here. So when I was building these, I would have 25 of all these parts ready. And then I would, you know, in a day's time, I could weld up 15 of these things. Um, I'd drill these. I would weld this nut on there where this goes through. See this, these tighten up against here, holds it. So you can adjust it up and down. All right, let me let it down a little. I would make various, this is three quarter cold roll steel. And I'd cut me off a whole bunch of, you learn after a while that not to get them real long because what happens then is they hit these other adjustments down there. So, you know, this is about a 10 inch piece. And I had access there was a place in Winfield, Kansas that had all these various size circles at the junkyard. And I'd go down the junkyard and gather up a five gallon bucket of various sizes, some of them bigger, some of them littler. And I even done square ones for the top. But see, this fits in here. And of course, what you're doing is just pulling her up tight, see? All right. Then that's why I got the notch in this top position. If I'm really wailing away on a piece or something like a big bust or something like that, I would put it in and lock it in this niche. But now if I wanted to, see, so if you're in that top niche like that, you can still rotate it around and tighten it up. But now, if you loosen it up just a little bit, it'll lay over. Now, see where I got that pin welded? So, if I'm hammering at it at an angle over there, this keeps the thing from turning on there, you know. This thing would just keep turning around and around as you smack it every time. But, let's say I want to lay it over. That's why you got to decide to put position this pin just past the bottom of your hole. Because if I want to lay this all the way over against the pin and tighten it up, then I can pound the heck out of stuff here and it's a stop against this pin. Um, I've, when I was teaching off from these, I would always warn my students about a couple of things because it would invariably happen every class. First of all, the guys wouldn't get these tight enough and they'd be pounding away or something on it. And all of a sudden, if they didn't have these tight enough, look what happens. It'll fall down, right? Well... I've had people who actually was messing with this and pinched their finger there or something. So, you know, there's things about them. They're not foolproof vices. But they, they do come all apart. This screws out of the bottom. I even used to weld two pins down here. Like you could set your feet on those two pins. And if I wanted to unscrew the whole thing out of the bottom... You just kick those pins and unscrew it out of there. But uh, I used to sell these years ago. But, you know, I'm at retirement age now. I'm not about out there um, at all the wood carving shows and all the wood carving uh, seminars and stuff like I once was. But anyway, that's basically the idea. The first time I ever even saw this type of an idea, God, it was years ago in maybe Carving Illustrated or one of the magazines, I don't think it was Chip Chats or something, where they had a uh, eye bolt through here. Well, I made one of those right off the bat and realized that that design could have been improved on 
a lot, you know. So anyway, I came up with this design. I've seen it copied at shows over and over and over. But it seems to work really well. Um, I have other carving vices, but then this, all together, the parts may only cost you about $45. So, anyway, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little clue on my carving vice because uh, I had a lot of people asking about them. So, we'll talk to you guys on the next Wood Carver's Corner.